Good morning, everybody, and welcome into the locker room with Billy Schwein right here on 97.3 ESPN and the 97.3 ESPN mobile app. It's the weekend. It's Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, man, I love a lot of football, a lot of football to talk about. In the locker room with me today, former Eagles linebacker Brad Quas. What's up, big Brad? Good morning. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Good morning. I ate too much last night. Did yesterday. you eat too much last night? I didn't drink too much. I don't yes, know. I You're did. a big guy. It takes a lot to fill you up, I bet. Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. Brad, this is a great weekend, isn't it? And you're, you know, you play for Iowa, man. You know what it's all about. The Thanksgiving weekend is is football fun? Yeah, football, family football. Food. You can watch college football from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Then you have great games uh, today. today. Uh, Ohio State, Michigan uh, is going to be a great game. Auburn, then, Alabama, yeah, the Iron Bowl. Some some great games, and then uh, obviously you got the pro games. Uh, you know the four games on on Thanksgiving. So it's a it's a it's a happiness to if you like. Yeah, uh, but it's like football. bittersweet too, though. You get the, you know you're at the end of the college season, basically. Yeah, and I mean I, I know we have all like a few games left, the Army Navy game and a couple other ones, the championship games. But for all intents and purposes, man, it's it, it's it, over. It's over, and and that's the big thing. Think about this: these the the student athlete, the college <laughs> games are over, and the pros are just kind of getting into the second half. Right, right. So. so that's the biggest problem when you're a rookie coming into the league is the second half of the season, and then you get playoffs. So it's like almost two full seasons. So it's it's hard to adjust to that when you're. And boy, uh, is it two full seasons? Look at the Eagles. They start off at two and five, and now we're talking about play a possible playoff berth. Plus, they they wanted to fire him, uh, you know, two weeks ago, and now <laughs> fire and now, Gannon and Seriani. Yeah, yeah, wanted to fire the whole coaching staff, and now uh, now they're, we're talking playoffs. So that's just the way uh, football works, and. And I'm happy for uh, the, the Eagles in the town, and everyone's getting behind them. There's an article that was uh, in the uh, Daily News. I get, of course, I get the Daily News, and uh, by J Casey Joyner talking about the um, the New York Times NFL playoff birth uh, playoff predictor model has the Eagles at a 31 percent chance of making the playoffs. Now, who would have thunk it? Like in the beginning of the season, you know how everybody gives their predictions of of uh, they give their predictions of what the season's going to look like. I said eight and nine. And that was that was kind of like, hopefully not. I I know there's some uh, a good good friend of ours, Joe Lenigan from Lenigan Plumbing and Heating. He was he was like twelve and four, twelve and five. <laughs> yeah, it, it's amazing how you can't predict it, and and uh, I'm just glad that they're playing a lot better football, and they're they seem like they're meshing together more as a unit. Brad. That's why he's a former athlete, as a former football player. You can't tank. I mean, people were saying, "Oh, let's just tank and get a pick." There were look look. Just two, three, four weeks ago, the Eagles have won three of their last four games. So five weeks ago, everybody's like, you know what? Let's let maybe tank and get a pick. But you know, as a football player, you can't do that. You look at every game. You, you can't tank. I mean, it's not in our nature. You're out there to win every game and right. compete at the highest level. And and guys want to play their best. You know, maybe when you're out of the playoff situation and, and you don't have it, you still want to play personally, play your best because you're playing for a contract. Right, right, and right, you're trying right, to play right. For your next, your next, uh, next team or current team, and. And, and and try to make that next big a big time contract. So guys don't think like that, and that's just people talking. Oh, we're going to tank to get a better pick. right, right, that's just right. Not the case. I mean, not it's case. it's so funny how far we've come to, to like the doom and gloom of two and five, and like everybody's like the coach is on the hot seat. Jalen Hurts isn't the franchise guy. This that and the other thing, and now three out of four, and we're we're at five and six, facing the easiest part. Uh, in quotations, well, let, well, easy. Let me ask you, Bill. By the way, I don't think any game's easy. No, they're not easy. They got to play every single one of them. They're all professional athletes and get paid to play and line up. Let me ask you that: Is he the franchise quarterback, though, Billy? Well, I'll tell you what. I, I've been more patient than other people. I've been saying from day one. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, PT is in the house. He's actually the uh, producer today. Josh Henning has the day off, and uh, Pete. No, Pete. What was your prediction at the beginning of the year? What did you think of Jalen Hurts? I believe I said like at best nine and seven, but more like seven and nine. Or right. is, is that enough? No, seven, that's, that's uh, one, one more. One more. But either way, uh, I did. I wasn't optimistic, and my big thing was, and the reason I felt compelled to turn my mic on and interrupt is because Brad and I share the same thing, which is we're not fully sold on whether Jalen Hurts is the guy. Now, am I becoming a Jalen Hurts believer? Yes, because each week he continues to do that. But there's one thing that really bugs me is I don't know that, like, the elite quarterbacks in the NFL – are able to basically drop back on their own five-yard line, 
and throw it into the opposite end zone. They have cannons for arms. Well, I think that so Jalen Hurts may not be the most accurate thrower. He's a great athlete, and he's a dual threat, and they're winning because they have a ground game, and they're winning because they also have to account for him like they had to account for Randall Cunningham back in the day. But that's my thing is – you know, if he misses easy throws, easy outs, the tight end over the middle, you know, a 10, 15 yard throw. That's where I, I don't know that he's well, the and, guy. Yet. And Brad, here's it. So I agree with that. All right. I agree with that too. But here's the thing. Look at this total touchdowns. First 15 career starts NFL QB since 2013. Patrick Mahomes, 47. Deshaun Watson, 38. Justin Ab Herbert, 36. Jalen Hurts, 29. He's yeah. right there. Yeah. And several are tied at 29. So you just have to look at it like you mentioned, uh, Pat, uh, Pat Holmes, right? Look at the year he had the Super Bowl year, right? And then all of a sudden he kind of fell off, and 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 I think defenses figure him well, they out. Catch up to him, they right? catch up to him. They they kind of figure out your your weakness, and that's how good the coaching uh, uh, coaching staffs are in the NFL. And you just have to improve every year. So you do. It's okay to have an off uh, off year or off couple of weeks, but we just got to make sure, like Pete said. He has to make better, accurate passes down the field to win games. So to answer your question, is he the franchise quarterback moving forward? I'm as of right now, he's my guy. He's your guy. He's okay. my guy. If I'm if I'm Nick Sariani, if I'm uh, you know uh, Roseman, Howie Roseman, Howie Roseman, Howie Roseman yeah, Jeffrey he, Lurie, he's my guy. Okay, okay. He and hasn't you, done any. I so mean, you, so you build around him and get a better defense. We need why a better, not? We need a better Mike linebacker. We need a better a uh, rush guy. We need one rush guy and, a, we, and, and we somebody need, in the better. Guy corner and we need a strong safety there you go okay no right? problem no problem we got that <laughs> well, we got that, <laughs> get that in the draft, right? i don't think so okay. now we, will the colts stop hey, winning please hey, yeah, hey we right. got a great show lined up every saturday and the dolphins come we on got, man they're ruining our, <laughs> our we wanted like pick. we wanted like three yeah, picks in the top but if, 12 but if you're going defense they'll, those guys will be around they'll be around they'll be around at the late in the late Do first you round honestly think they'll go defense I, I mean, you're like Pete, they you're better. Like, they I, better. I'm not saying should they. I'm saying, do you honestly? Yes, think I, think, I, I think. I think. I, think, I, I, think they I will. love that kid from uh, Oregon, the Ducks. That uh, oh my gosh, that outside linebacker. He's he's special. Well, and here's we need a thing. mic though. We need a mic. Right. Yeah, Mike, Michael Mike. Parsons looked pretty special. They didn't want any interest yeah. in him. Yeah, right. No, All he's, he's doing he's is having, setting records on having, Thanksgiving. He's day. having a great day. Great Unbelievable. Day. All right, the Eagles have the Giants, Jets, a bye week. Washington, New York Giants, Washington, and Dallas, the last. They don't games. get on a plane. When they came back from right. Denver, they don't have to get on a plane. And Brad could speak to that, the fact that when you're an athlete, and, like, you know, I read an article this morning about Fletcher Cox bothered. He Normally a five-hour flight, you would sleep on the way home. Right. He didn't sleep at all on the way home because he'd ripped his own position coach, right? He'd ripped the defensive coordinator. He questioned the identity of the football team. He was pissed off at the offense. Everything was bothering him. But from that point on, Billy, where they basically got embarrassed by the Raiders in Las Vegas, the Eagles have turned things turned around. around. Well, Pete, I'll tell you, when you're 300 pounds, you don't sleep in an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> you don't sleep in an airplane. Six, six, 300 pounds, you don't sleep in an airplane, my friend. All right, listen, we got, we got a great show lined up. Saturday is Dave Sharapan, the sportsbook consigliere. will check in some big rivalry games in college football today. I love it. And then, of course, our pro picks on Sunday. So we got the sportsbook consigliere at 1030. And then at 11 o'clock, Brad, we've got a five-time Pro Bowl selection center, three-time Super Bowl champion for the New York Giants, former Giant Bart Oates. Bart Oates, yeah. Bart, he's a great guy. I've known him a long time. Uh, and he's uh, the president uh, of the NFL Alumni Association here at Mount Laurel. And uh, he's he's an interesting guy to talk to. So I'm excited uh, to talk uh, to him. And I want to pick his brain about the Eagles-Giants rivalry. Upcoming game. Yeah, he has many years of experience, that rivalry, Eagles-Giants. Of course, so you know, we, we, we've, we've, we've broken the hearts of, of many Giant fans, right, Pete, over the years? with, a, with Listen, a I'm West so old. <laughs> when I used to go to Section 649 of the Vet, I'd watch those Giants fans get in fights right <laughs> behind. Because 649, you know, you're like a little seven or eight-year-old kid. You turn around, you're like, Daddy, why is that man hugging that other? man they're yeah. not hugging son boom wow. boom punch boom you know and the vet steps were so steep up oh, there I billy know. like somebody would inevitably take a tumble and i'd see like some guy in a phil mcconkey jersey come up with like <laughs> blood on his Bavaro chin, or you know yeah. <laughs> or lt lt everyone had the lt jersey ah, LT, man. and then of course brad you and i had an interesting week we'll talk about this in the second hour but you invited me to go see the uh premiere 
of uh, American Underdog, which was a phenomenal story. Dick Vermeil yeah, yeah, the invited Warner you story. to go. And- Warner, yeah, it was it was a, a great thing seeing some uh, some guys uh, players that played with uh, Coach Vermeil back in that era, the '80 team, and. And it was fun watching. And a true story. It made, you know, I'm sitting next to Billy uh, eating, pop- <laughs> eating, eating all his popcorn. He's got, eating all Billy's popcorn. And, you know, I look around, I look, look next to him and he's got a little tear, little tear coming down his eye. A little tear jerker. So we had a, we had a blast. It was one you of those I got, I got warm, a, warm, fuzzy movies. Yeah. And the, a movie I want to take my kids to. Well, we'll it comes out to. Christmas Day. Yeah. Dick Vermeil, I got a couple questions in there. Oh, you did. Yeah, right? Pete, yeah, Pete, he, he asked a few questions. I, uh, I he looked at me and goes, well, that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Howard Eskin uh, was sitting in front of us. He looked around and was like, who is that guy? Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, uh, Howard was just de- jealous that he didn't get exactly. to ask the question. Wait, exactly. somebody's asking a better question than oh, me. Yeah. We're going to get into it. We got some great sound. We talked to uh, John Spagnoli, Spagnoli and, of course, our own Ken Dunnick. Uh, from the Jersey Man and Philly Man magazine, got their reaction. We'll play that in the second hour, but we got a lot to talk about today. College football, pro football, Eagles football, and maybe in the second hour we'll talk about the Flyers debacle. Uh, boy, I'll tell you what, man. When I left the house, they were winning three to two, and I, really? I went to work to, to do some yeah. work. Yeah, they lost six three. That's that's bad. Bad. That's not good. That's not good. Oh. I think I, what, it, I think it's a combination of just the coaching or. Uh, I don't know, lack of effort, maybe. I, I don't know. I, 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 cause you know, listening to the radio, you can't see, yeah, you know, but they've lost five in a row. They lost five. In Listen, a row. I'm proudly supporting the colors today. Yes, you but that's are. That's only because I'm in here tomorrow as well. Thank and tomorrow, you. I'll be wearing the Eagles colors. Okay, so, good. You know, okay. I just wanted to show that I haven't abandoned the ship yet. But my goodness, they wow. got some problems up they, there. They 3601 they South Broad. Right. They do. The first hour of the locker room is powered by Surety Title. Surety provides comprehensive title insurance protection and professional settlement services for home buyers, sellers, real estate agents, brokers, lenders, home builders, developers, and attorneys to facilitate your real estate purchases. Surety is an industry wide leader with a team of experts that help you through the entire process from contract signing to closing, from the shortest center city. And every place in between, Surety Title is there for you. With 15 office locations in New Jersey and PA, that's Surety Title. For more information, call our good friend Ron Conklin at 856-988-8900. Uh, and my winner, Watchdog, this is a great company. Have you heard of New Jersey's premier oh, vacant oh, wow. home <laughs> management service, my winner, Watchdog? You know those worrisome thoughts that creep in your mind every time you hear of a storm coming and the daunting task of driving down to the shore to check on your house hours of time on the road. Let my winter watchdog be your eyes and ears with their 15-point inspection checklist. They offer a full menu of maintenance and improvement services. Owner Debbie McGonigal and her team of property caretakers are professional, licensed, bonded, and insured. So don't let the winner worry you. They'll give your house that lived-in look. That's my winter watchdog. Go to mywinterwatchdog.com or give them a call at 267-202-1869. That's 267 267- 202-1869 or uh, send Debbie an email Debbie at mywinnerwatchdog.com Alright, when we return, we'll continue with more here in the locker room with Billy Schwein, Brad Quast, 97.3 ESPN and the mobile app.
perfect gift for every guy in your list at Untuckit.com or 80 plus Untucket stores. Untucket shirts designed to be worn. Untucket. All right, we're back here in the locker room with Billy Schwab, Brad Quast. Thanksgiving yes. weekend, man. Yes, we are on Twitter. We are also on we're streaming live. YouTube. We're live on Twitter. YouTube, YouTube, and, YouTube and Twitter. Twitter All right. man. That's All right. the two. YouTube and we're going to see the, the sports book consigliere. We'll see what he's wearing uh, coming up here at the bottom of the hour from he, Vegas. Does he, does he have some winning picks, you think? Uh, he, he, well, what? he's always – his, his How did he do last week? He, uh, I think it was uh, – I think it was – Six, uh, four and two. Okay, to be honest, right. okay, that's winning. But I got to tell you something. You know, look, I'm looking at the newspaper. Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia, Georgia Tech. Uh, what's Alabama, the number? What's the number Auburn. on the Ohio State, Michigan game? The Ohio State, Michigan game. Where is that? Ohio State in Michigan. the paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seven and a half. It's in the big house. Right? Yeah, you know, Michigan hasn't beat hasn't won in five six years. Like Jimmy Harbaugh hasn't won in seven years. No, seven imagine? years. Yeah, Can that, you that was the big article on the back of the paper yeah. that I read this morning. I, I, re, I look, I break Billy Stone's relentlessly about getting his stats out of the paper two days later. You yeah. know, but I the reality you. of it is, the reality <laughs> of it is that uh, we're all of that age where we read the paper, yeah. right? Yeah, and right? today they were talking about Harbaugh and the fact that look. He may have had some success, but he cannot beat the Buckeyes. Yeah. And in, if you can't do that, you can't win. And if yeah. and if he wasn't a Michigan grad and right. played there, he probably right. would have been gone. Right. And, you, know, you can't lose that. You can't, yeah, you can't lose that. I like Jimmy. I, I played against him. I picked him off twice mm-hmm. at Iowa. Did, did you really? Yeah. Yeah. I picked Jimmy, I picked Jimmy off. Twice. I picked Jimmy off twice. But uh, but I I, I, boy. I can remember though, eighteen years old. You know, playing in the big house. Yeah. Hundred five thousand. What's that man. like running it, out it's, that stand? It's, it's amazing. Amazing. What are, so what are the, some of the other big places? That well, you, uh, uh, you know that was always it was that was the fun. Big house ever played the horseshoe? Yeah, played the horseshoe twice, uh, Ohio State, and then they came to our place, uh, Kinnick Stadium twice. Um, that was I never played at Penn State. Penn State wasn't in the conference back right, then. Right, right, right. But uh, the big the big house was was pretty uh, pretty special. So take us through. Do you, ever, you play on Thanksgiving Day? Have you I never played. You, on play, you guys played on that Friday. Yeah, right? yeah. We, and we didn't. And what was your big rivalry? Uh, Iowa like, State. Man, I was State. Hawks the Cyclones. The Cyclones. Do some research. Yeah, yeah, no, man, that's why it, I got him in here. I don't have to do research. It's in state, in state, out of state. Uh, you know, <laughs> like Iowa was the uh, the the you know kind of the the. I don't know more influential. Yeah, back school. then Iowa State wasn't much. No, they were. They weren't. Yeah. They weren't. Doesn't good. matter. They weren't good, but it was it's still, still Michigan, it's, Michigan State, Iowa, Iowa yeah, State, right? Auburn, cool. Alabama. So I always thought things. didn't Notre Dame always play USC this weekend? Didn't that wasn't that a or how about how about Pittsburgh, West Virginia, yeah. the backyard brawl? Pittsburgh, they don't have that one anymore. None of that. They don't do any they don't more do any of that because stuff. of the mega conferences now. It's, it's right. a shame that you're losing the rivalry, but but it, it was fun though. The, that was, you know, games like that, you know, in state. What do they you, call the Oregon Oregon State game? The Civil War? Is that the Civil yeah, War? Yeah, I think that's where Civil War is. That War what that is, is, Pete? You know, Oregon Oregon State. Right? I did not research that. All right. Phil, <laughs> yeah. Phil, uh, Phil, Phil off the top of your head. Phil Knight. Yeah. Phil Knight. And I, yeah. look, I was actually explaining to somebody last night the difference between Corvallis and Beaverton. I mean, I could, I, I uh, can tell you that. Yes, yeah. I can tell you that Oregon gets the Nike money, and Oregon Georgia, State Georgia is Tech. the uh, redheaded stepchild. Exactly. You know? Yeah. It, it's and that it's unfair. It's yeah. unfair what, what what some guys do and and uh, uh, blank blank. Clemson, it, it, South Carolina is a big one. That's a big that's one between a big one. between, between, like between the hedges. You know, can I please get the question in about Kinnick Stadium though? Because he did play. In yeah. Iowa, and you know, first of all, uh, full disclosure, Brad, I spent a decade in Nebraska, okay. right? So your <laughs> Iowa Hawkeyes, yeah, benefited from Nebraska <laughs> down their chest yesterday. Yes, okay, yes, yes. Once again, poor Scott Frost, who's a hero in that state, uh, watch, a watches man. his team just uh, blow a lead again. Now the Huskers did switch quarterbacks, and their new quarterback seems to be doing well. But I want to hear about the traditions. Like you played for Coach Fry, yeah, Hayne Fry. I mean, Hayne Fry, Billy, legendary Hayne Billy, Fry. You remember the show Coach on ABC? Yes, yeah, that's yes. what it was. Yeah, that's yeah. based off yeah, of Barry Hayne Camp. Fry. Barry yeah. Camp, the executive producer, went to Iowa. Oh, is that right? Yeah, and, and so he was there when it was filming and. And everything and, and it was on uh, Coach Fry, the pink locker room, pink locker room, the visitors <laughs> locker. Yeah, so Coach Fry was a psychology major, right? And when he came up to Iowa, he changed the uniforms and made it pink. He, and what? literally, and, and when I tell you the urinals, the carpeting, uh, the walls, the lockers are pink. What? 
what, what was a, the what because was it? Of, because it was it's a just subdued, a subtle like uh, subdued, subdued way to like, make them like you would come in and passive. you'd be like oh my gosh i'm relaxed but but here's the deal <laughs> so it got Bo shamblocker so pissed off that he would come he would come, he would come the uh two days before his and cover it all up and cover it up <laughs> with butcher paper yeah. so so coach fry would go in his, in his southern he, he goes guys coach Bo is so upset about the pink locker rooms <laughs> So we had we had them already. So oh, uh, we had they were stuff, thinking about man. that big locker rooms because for 20 minutes the guys would not worry about who they're playing. The Hawkeyes they'd worry about the pink locker room. Hey, I just I just took a dump in the pink locker room. <laughs> right, right, right. The urinals, the urinals are pink. The showers are pink. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's funny. Oh, that's that's crazy. Hey, Fred, God, what man. about the hospital? That's Iowa, right? Yeah. So so you, that tradition started well after you were yeah, gone. Well, the right? You could actually see up yeah, at the, the window. Remember so, that, that, yeah. that melted my heart. Oh, How can it not, God. Billy? So, because they're they're ter- these these kids are terminally ill. Right. And, right. And. and, and and you know they have you know rare diseases and and for them to do that and you see the the waving the the the, the lights on the phones it's it's just special uh, really I'll it's tell cool. you what man great that, tradition. that doesn't motivate you oh, it's great well. tradition everyone stops the yeah. refs turn everybody you know visiting side the wave side you know it's it's a real special uh, moment rivalries bring out the best in, in the underdog doesn't it it does why, it, what is that i mean i mean you, why you you're you're well you're not a professional but Professional, do professional athletes and and, uh, and uh, college players at that level need something extra? To get them pumped it, up. It, listen, so so it's a good question. In college, you're you're dealing with eighteen to twenty three year old young men, so you got rivalries and you got things to do. You know, like Ohio State, Michigan is they they don't even talk about the team up north. That's well, what they do. They, they don't, don't even call they, about they, it. They don't even right, they, the they, team. They, up they north. literally. Right. I've got friends that play. <laughs> they don't even talk about it. it's it's a team up north. <laughs> They can't mention it. Is that, that's crazy. They don't mention it. So yeah. the team up north. But college, you have to get kids motivated because they're in school. They broke up with their girlfriend or whatever. Pros, you, there's a lot. You just yeah. you, you play. You, so you don't believe in a letdown in pros? Like, is, is, could the Eagles suffer? A, I mean, how do you suffer a letdown against the Giants? You, you don't say you, you're professional. You don't set a letdown. You start getting letdowns when uh, you know you're out of the playoff picture. And you, you know, you, it starts getting cold, and the holidays come, Christmas is right. coming, and you don't, you don't, it in. and you're start, you're packing it. In, and if you have kids in the school system, okay, where am I going to go? Right, I'm, we're moving the whole family back. At, you know, right, come right, January right, one, right, right. You know, then you see the kind of the, in the locker room that way. But uh, and on, by contrast, when you're like where, where the Eagles are right now, at five and six, and seeing a, a big bright light at the end of the tunnel. I'm sure they're extra motivated. Yeah, they're motivated. And plus, with these new coaches, they're young and they're they're hungry. They're they're they're, they're, they're hungry and, and they're and they're excited. They're, they have excitement. Right. You know, they got passion, and you right. can see that the way they talk. And I think that motivates the older players, the Fletcher Cox, the guys that have been around a long time. They like to see that that young blood that and that blend of young young talent. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, gets wanna, excited about every little thing, yeah, right? They want to they want to see it. And then, but I tell you one thing, they don't when when you start losing <laughs> and you have that young blood. That it gets old. Like that, that like Pete old. and I've discussed this numerous times. Singleton bothers me. How, you know his, how so? his antics. Like he'll doesn't, he'll make doesn't bother me. He'll make a tackle fifteen yards down the field and he'll get up like he just stuffed I mean, somebody I wish in the goal he had line. A little more talent, but he doesn't uh, bother I, me. No, but, he'll, but Pete will get up and he'll act like he stuffed somebody in the goal yeah. line. <laughs> that's that's twenty twenty one. I mean yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's a modern that's pro sports. Yeah, you know. Yeah, but but Brad, there's a time and a place for that, man. Yeah, but I it's funny. Quick story. So that can work. That can work against you. Big big back to Iowa, right? So my junior year. Uh, Tippett, Andre Tippett, Hall of Fame, oh, Andre him, Tippett, yeah. right? He came back, he had shoulder surgery, so he was he headed at Iowa City, Iowa, and he spent the whole year back with us. So I did something similar to that, made a play, and I come off, he goes, <laughs> he goes, Q, Q, come here. He goes, act like you've been there. Act like you've been there. And you're like, oh, man. Tip, 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 right, tip, right. tip, tip six, five, 350, uh, 250 right. pounds, you know, uh, six-degree black belt. Right, he goes, right. He goes, Q, act like you've been there. Oh, and I go, okay, Tip. Okay. All right, Tip. All oh, right, Tip. Great, hey, Billy, you know there's 45 former Iowa Hawkeyes in the NFL right now? How about Pete On Johnson? NFL rosters that? and practice squads. Now, the greatest compliment that I can give the Iowa program is – there's 45 guys. I literally, while y'all were talking, scrolled through them, and some of the names I recognize, but most of them I don't. And to me, that's Iowa football. It is. They Iowa produce football, NFL but, but, talent. But they do, but why don't we win more games, though? 
Iowa? Yeah, we got to win more games. See, I want to. I want to. Okay. I want to be. You want to be like in the elite. I, I, I want to be. In the I hear league. you. And you want to be Alabama. Iowa, when I went to Iowa, we were we were top ten every year. One year, uh, my junior year, we were number one in the country. Coming preseason and well, Heisman maybe, candidate. Maybe it's because most of these names are linemen. Did, Brad, did you, ever, <laughs> did you ever when you played against Ohio State? Was Woody? Uh, who, who, no, it was uh, Earl Bruce. It wasn't, and then Coop. Who was before him? Then, then it, it, it was so. Who's the guy uh, that punched the uh, Clemson uh, guy? Uh, what, what he, uh, Woody, Woody Hayes. Woody, Woody Hayes. Woody Hayes. Yeah, yeah I didn't. You didn't no, no, it was Earl Bruce. You didn't, Earl, how how old are you making, Brad Quast? I mean, come on, <laughs> Brad. <laughs> listen, to, let's, let's listen to these names here: Austin Bly, okay. Mike Bettinger, right? Sixty-five lineman. Brian Bulaga, lineman. Oh, Coy yeah. Cronk, lineman. Dominic Daphne, lineman. James Daniels, right? Mike Daniels. Carl Davis, defensive lineman. Okay, here's a number. A.J. Epenza. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. You recognize this one. Noah Fan. Every so oh, often, remember, yeah, you recognize man. George Kittle, right? Kittle, every, yeah. Every yeah. so often, you get the – but that's, that's but, to but your so, point, why – Yeah. Right. It, because all these – of the 45 – 30 of them or 35 of them are linemen. Yeah, so if we don't get the skilled guys. Right. But but if you want to be a, a like they're calling us, you know, you have uh Penn State linebacker you. Right, right. Tight end you is is uh, Iowa. Uh, Iowa. Mean, we had well the last four or five years we've got first round draft choices. Right. And then Kurt Ferentz, when I was at Iowa, Kurt Ferentz was the line coach. Okay. So he talked about putting out on linemen. I mean, they do a great job with linemen. All right, uh, I'm telling you, man, I'm enjoying this. The Me first too. hour of the locker room is powered by Surety Title. Surety provides comprehensive title insurance protection, and professional settlement services for home buyers, sellers, real estate agents, brokers, lenders, home builders, developers, and attorneys to facilitate your real estate purchases. Surety is an industry wide leader with a team of experts to help you through the entire process from contract signing to closing for the shortest center city and every place in between. Surety Title is there for you with 15 office locations. In New Jersey and PA, that's surety title. For more information, call our good friend Ron Conklin at 856-988-8900. Friends, let me tell you about Maserati, the main line, located just minutes from downtown Philadelphia. They offer a client-focused car buying experience designed to exceed all expectations and invite you to stop and see the area's largest selection of new Maseratis, including the sporty Ghibli midsize sedan of the class leading Levante, the only SUV worthy being called a Maserati. Maserati of the Mainline also leads the nation's certified pre-owned sales and has the highest quality like new Maseratis available on the market. Your experience is not at the point of a sale as Maserati of the Mainline offers free pickup and delivery for scheduled service appointments and provides a new Maserati loaner car. So be audacious. Call my good friend Michael Pelleggi at Maserati of the Mainline today at 484-804-4800. That's 484-804-4800 or visit him online anytime at MOTML.com. And, of course, Maserati, the main line, is the only place to get a Maserati. When we return, we'll talk to the sportsbook consigliere, Dave Sherapan. You're listening to The Locker Room with Billy Schwime on 97.3 ESPN.
All right, we're back here in the locker room. Billy Schwein, Brad Quast. Though, Brad, this is a, my favorite segment. We go out to Las Vegas every Saturday at 1030 to talk to with a sportsbook consigliere. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> but he's he's animated, he's colorful, and he's always got great, he's always got a great uh, hat, outfit. So without any further ado, Sorry. <laughs> let's go to the uh, Maserati of the main line, sports hotline, and welcome into is. the locker room, the sportsbook consigliere. Dave Sharapan, there he is. With the greatest hat. Hey, what up, David? Guys. What up, Sixers. David? Sixers. <laughs> Look at the guy. Guys, what's up? I mean, Billy, every single week I come in here, all right, there's a new guy in here. Brad, good to see you again. Yeah. Pete shows up. He's wearing flyer stuff. Yeah. So what did you think I was going to come in today? I mean, you know, I, <laughs> last week we did the Bryce Harper tribute in the Philly stuff. So this week we got to come in the Sixers stuff. Bonus pick for you today, Billy. You can lay it with the Sixers today. All the right. overnight line was short, and it came out uh, three and a half ish four. Moved up to about five now. I think the Sixers win and cover today. Little bonus pick. I know you don't do the basketball as much. Not yet, anyway. And no. by the way, speaking of basketball, I saw you were at the Gonzaga Duke game the other night. So Gonzaga wow. Duke last night. Dad daughter date night. I saw that Tuesday night pulled the move Gonzaga UCLA. Nice. Um, Some good teams out there. Yeah, yeah. They, they're all here. Uh, made a call, know a guy, got a little bit of a hookup, <laughs> got I the kids that. taken care of, I took the that. wife out. I got a guy, I got a guy. We'll it got happens. A guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, looking for Genesis tickets. Yeah, you got a guy, you got a guy. I got a guy. Uh, not in Philly, Brad. Sorry, I okay. can't help you there. Although, maybe make a call. I, I might be make able to guy. help you. I got a guy. Hey, Dave. Uh, Dave, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you had you and yours had a, you a wonderful too. Thanksgiving. And it sounds like you did. Uh, but now it's football. What what a, what a great weekend for college football and especially the rivalry games. I mean, it, it's a plethora of, of uh, games this weekend. I don't know what to pick. It's massive. It's, it's, it's almost like when you got the table full of all the side dishes. And you don't know which one to pick. There's just too many games. No, seriously. Right. And then you've got college basketball going on. There's just it's a big distraction. You know, full card of NBA on Wednesday and NHL, and then nothing Thursday, and then everything yesterday. It's nuts, man. There's just there's a lot going on in college football. You know, it's the last game for so many teams. Um, people go crazy in the book, betting probably a little bit too much, but knowing that it's the last of raw. Uh, at least until Sunday when he well, catching, that's, up, catching up. And that's what we said to Brad earlier in the show, that it's kind of like a bittersweet. It's a little, you know, bittersweet because you know it's the end. Yeah, it's the end of uh, the college season, and then you got to wait for the bowl games yeah. to come out. And I mean, you had the conference championships, but for, by and large, for all intents and purposes, it's done. It's all over! It's all over. <laughs> Another year. Christmas will be here, then New Year's. and <laughs> Put lights up, and it's getting yeah. cold back there and all that other stuff. It is. It's a transition day. Um, you know, but we'll, I mean, we'll have the bowl games, but nothing lives up to this weekend. This is just, nah, this you know, the great. games yesterday are fun. You had a lot of games. Cincinnati covered yesterday, made their case, still undefeated. Probably going to get in the playoff now if they win next week. Um, really interesting stuff going on. So, yeah, it's, 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 I mean, obviously it's a big week and it, it's a big, I, I got big a game for you, Dave. Yeah. Like in-state rivalries, do you put an extra emphasis on, uh, you know, the, looking at the point spread, you know, interstate like Michigan, Ohio state and, and, or, uh, Oregon, know, Oregon, Oregon state, state, any of these big uh, rivalries know. where we were talking about it earlier with the, these guys, the underdogs get up for these games yeah. all the time. And I think, it depends who you talk to in the room. Like when, when you're doing this stuff, some guys value it a little bit more, but a lot of times it's just like some guys will just say the numbers are the numbers. Don't get caught up in all of that. And I think it's two different schools of thought when you make wagers, like how you approach it. So, I mean, I say all the time, nobody knows Squadoosh. That's one of my lines. Like <laughs> the, the, nobody does. Everybody kind of has a different way of getting to uh, a bet or a pass, or a number. So I think it has some value in certain ones, but it can't be uniform across all of them. We're talking to the sportsbook consigliere, Dave Sherapin. Let's do something different. 
Oh. Let's have you oh. pick the three college games okay. today. What games are you looking at, sports book? Wow. Well, let's go off the grid. I mean, you know, last week he got threw me for a loop with a couple of games. <laughs> he does. Well, that was he does that a little bit here. Mike Carlin had the Navy game. <laughs> no, he threw me the Navy game, Army, and all this yeah. other stuff. So I'm going to throw you one Don't kind of a dud though. game, but it's a good betting opportunity, okay? West Virginia is playing at Kansas, at Kansas. and there ain't nobody looking at this game. But West Virginia is favored by 15 and a half, way too many points. You want to talk about like a team with life. Kansas beat Texas a couple weeks ago, played very competitive last week, getting over two touchdowns in the last game of the season. You want a dog you can take points with? That's it. Um, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Billy. Wow. There's another one. There's okay. a good rivalry. That's a big rivalry. Big, 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 big game. Big, big game. Everything points to taking Oklahoma, numbers-wise, historical-wise, all of these things. The numbers about, let me see before I four. tell you to lay it. What, it got three and a half or four? I think four. It's actually moving it's up. It's four. four. Yeah, it's at four there. You should lay it. It's going up four and a half. It might be five by kick tonight. Oklahoma State's defense is top ten in the country, and they are 100% going to limit – a freshman quarterback. Don't be surprised to see the other kid have to come in. Oklahoma State wins a game, and it probably goes under, which, again, that's an unusual one. Um, Notre Dame-Stanford, I've been told Notre that's Dame is a big is spread, decided. right? That's gigantic, 20 and a half points. Wow. No right mind would you want to be laying that number. But Stanford is terrible. Hasn't covered in weeks, and – the number has gone up some, what I like to call bad guys, the guys that come in with the bags of money and play it, have already <laughs> moved this number from 17 up to 19 and a half, 20, 20 and a half in places. Notre Dame's supposed to be the side. And then obviously the biggest game of the day. Billy, it's coming up in uh, almost uh, a little over an hour. Ohio State, Michigan. Interesting number. This was one where I was – in debate texts, it felt like I was back in the book. I haven't been in a book in a year after being in books for like 30. I'm out of the game, and they're trying to pull me back in. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is the line on Ohio State, Michigan. They just they won't let me go. So I said, well, you make it seven. I said, you got to make it seven. And they're like, what do you mean? It's got to be higher than that. Ohio State wins every year. Eight straight, 15 of the last 16. Everybody knows the stats. Yeah, but you watch a Michigan play. They're both 10 and 1. Ohio State 6-4 and 1 against the spread. Michigan is 9 and 2 against the number. Wow. They've been in every game. I mean, it's in the big house. Wow. And it's at Michigan. It's at Michigan. So, they put up 7, 7 and a half. Some people put up 8. It got up to 8 and a half and then the big move came yesterday in Vegas. And it started to trickle down across the country. So let me ask you this: How much when you when it moves that much? What kind of money are you talking about that, that drives that number down like that? So every book's different, Brad. But like okay. the guys I know at the one place here, the Circa, uh, they're they're taking a hundred k a game. Oof. Okay, wow. so you could go in there and drop a hundred k large, and, and, and you know that moves the number. Okay, now. now a hundred people could bet a hundred dollars, and a thousand people could bet a hundred dollars, and they won't move the line. But okay. if somebody comes in so with a limit play value, that they okay, respect, so it's, a, it's a amount. Okay, it's it, well, it's it's even the way I learned the business. It's who bets it, not who so much it. the okay. you, you give everybody the limit. But when a guy that you respect comes in, you know, if Billy comes in <laughs> and bets it, I ain't moving it. But I just met Pete. If Pete yeah. comes in and bets it, I'm moving. You know what I mean? I gotta move the number. So I'm going to take Ohio State. I, I'm glad you brought me up. By the way, I, I wanted to get your take on on the guy where it was the Ravens game winning TD that completed a better's one point one three million dollar parlay off a fifty dollar bet. I mean, that's the kind of thing that's, that that's that, that crazy, just man. the average casual fan. That drives them into the book. Of course. It's crazy. I mean, I, I was saying this before it was legal everywhere. I used to say, listen, when somebody hits one of these crazy parlays, tell everybody. Put it up. Because, <laughs> one, it's a fun story. Two, I would always try to find them and interview them. Right. And, like, try to get them, you know, 
the notoriety if they wanted it. But three, it's it brings in more business because you think, oh, I mean, you guys see what's going on back there. I was back there in the summer. There's commercials. It's almost it's way uh, too it's much. Constant. It's, constant. it's, constant. it's, yeah. in Georgia, it's yeah. sickening. It's yeah. too much. I and love JB Smooth, but I don't need to be seeing him on my TV every enough, five seconds. Tell me about Caesar. Enough with the Caesar's app, please. I mean, Caesar. <laughs> okay, you launched an app. We get it. <laughs> well, I'm running out of time here. Sportsbook can sing. We got the. Got? By the way, you can follow Dave Sherapan Sportsbook Sports BK can sing at Good Sports job, BK can sing on Twitter. Let's jump to two pro because yep. we got to get the pros in. Of course, yep. we want to know about our Eagles. Yes. Well, what do you think I'm going to say? I'm going to come on here wearing Sixers stuff. <laughs> come on. I'm looking at Pete, waiting for him to take me in the corner. Brad, I know, can get me over the five, middle. Five and minutes for out. boarding. Yeah. Yeah. Fighting. Plus Forget an additional it. two I, for his game. It's, yeah. it's, it's, listen, I, I can't find too many teams in the NFL that are playing better than the Eagles right now. How They're going to go to the Giants and lose. There's no chance. Now, the number's getting up. I mean, it's what three and a half. Man? It's going to four places. I mean, you better lay it now because it, tomorrow by kick, this thing might be five, five and a half. So I like the Eagles again. I'm riding this Eagles team. I think they win this week and win next week, and then we're going to start really talking about them being in the playoffs. And let's keep it in the NFC East. Yep. What about the Washington football team? Monday night, love, not like love, which is probably a really bad sign. I love Washington. I think the – Seahawks are done. There's word wow. hearing some rumbles that the Seahawks are not going to even let Russ play um, by kickoff. We, so wow. just keep out in the back of your mind. And if wow. it happens, make sure you tell everybody you heard it from me, Billy. But I really like Washington. I like the under ugly game. I don't know, 20 to 14, something like that. Washington wins. All right, well, there's it. We we love the sports book consigliere every Saturday right here in the <laughs> locker with Billy Schwab. Of course, you can follow him at Sports BK Consig. It's the sports book consigliere, Dave Sherapan. Man, every single week, Billy. You send me the <laughs> you send me the promo. I get excited on like Thursday or Friday. <laughs> then you send me the text. It's still dark here in Vegas. <laughs> when you send me the text, I start doing push-ups. I start drinking coffee because I know I got 15 minutes to match this energy every <laughs> single week. How do you think I feel, David? He killed me. <laughs> I don't know how There's you guys promo, do it for two promo hours. Promo every day. Oh, and you do, Dave. Dave, you have a great week, and I'll, we'll look to talk to you next Saturday right here. Happy the Thanksgiving, Happy guys. Thanksgiving, David. Take talk care, to you next fellas. Week. There he is, the sportsbook wow, consigliere, Dave Sherpan. Great guy. Only he, winners. He, he Talk about energy. He's got just he as much energy. energy as I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Only winners. The first hour of the locker was powered by Surety Title. Surety provides comprehensive title insurance protection and professional settlement services for home buyers, sellers, real estate agents, brokers, lenders, home builders, developers, and attorneys to facilitate your real estate purchases. From the shortest center city and every place in between, Surety Title is there for you with 15 office locations in New Jersey, PA. That's Surety Title. For more information, call my good friend Ron Conklin at 856-988-8900. Friends, uh, just about everybody on here has heard about the Jersey Man and Philly Man magazine run by ex-Philadelphia tight end Ken Dunnick. But were you aware of their private business network they call the Legacy Club? Every month they hold private events at upscale locations in Philadelphia, South Jersey that attract over 200 top business people. If you have an interest in attending one of these events and see if it's fit for your business, send an email to Ken at jerseymanmagazine.com or give them a call at 856-912-4007 for more information. All right, when we return, we'll wrap up the first hour of The Locker Room. You're listening to The Locker Room with Billy Schwein, Brad Quast on 97.3 ESPN and the mobile app.
promo code Henry. That's promo code Henry for your risk-free bet exclusively on the fan new sportsbook app. Must be boiler order and present in New Jersey. Bonus issued is now withdrawal for play credit expires in seven days. Max bonus $100. Plus 400 odds or longer wait to require the to apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanjo.com. Gambling problem. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, we're back here in the locker room. Billy Swan, Brad Quas. You know, Brad, uh, Mark Rimes just texted. He said, what about the Arizona Arizona State rivalry? That's a great, that's a great that one. one. That's I love that Grimes, school. he thought he had the hotline. Right. He was going to get his pick in. Or, you know, <laughs> I love that. You know, oh, hey, Billy, give me that you one. Think you think we know? can get another round of golf with him before uh, oh, yeah. it's cold? Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's kind of getting chilly. We're kind of at that spot right now. Well, you know? chill, little Wait, little first and foremost. I don't want to get a golf course with Pete anyway. Can we get butt. the free round of golf? Yes. Yes. Will Billy actually complete the 18 holes? No. Oh, stop. But I had a bad foot that day. Guess what, Brad? You didn't even finish. No, I can't. What I, was I, your excuse? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Eight new surgeries, a bad neck, a bad neck. I was going to say, keep it, P- a, keep it in my head. <laughs> uh, keep it PG <laughs> now. Keep yeah. it PG. We're on the radio. Hey, uh, Joe Lennigan's out there. You got to call in, Joe, because you know what? This talk about uh, optimism. Go optimism again. He had the Eagles going twelve and five. He, he was he just being like, I'm, you know, I wonder if Joe actually thought that out, or I mean. Not that, but Marcus Hayes and the Philadelphia Daily News had them going like eleven and seven. Uh, well, a bunch or eleven. When and we were six. at our event, a bunch of people were optimistic about uh, you know the Eagles. They were all ex Eagles, but it was fun to see uh, you know some of the experts. Now, why is my it? brother calling me on my phone when he knows on, on, the, on the air? What, yeah. what is he a yeah. moron? Put, put him on. Have him call in. Have yeah. him what call are you, in. an idiot, Bobby? He's calling Bobby. my phone like I'm on the like 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 I'm not working right now. Did I ever tell you? Did I ever tell you the story when I first met the twins? <laughs> oh, and, oh no! I'd like to hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I met the. Twins. And again, we are on the radio. Uh, yeah, right. I'll remember that. <laughs> I met the twins so through a dear friend of our Lou Manzo. Okay. At nights in Venice. All right. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, so the party. It was probably yeah. one of the best parties. Tim and Maxine used to have a. A uh, party every every night in Venice, and it was probably one right. of the best parties. There was like a stretch of like ten now, years that's in a row. Something, Billy. I have a. Mosh pit. Yeah. Funny. Our good friend Lou Manzo. Talk about a sports fan. He, yeah, man. Lou likes likes yeah. his Philly sports. He's he really a, does. A, yeah. Lou was like he, back in the day when remember we played street hockey and everything, Pete. You know, yeah. he always had to be Bobby Clark. He always had to be Ron Jew, You know, oh, he was, was always the was, guy. It was, was Jody Clark's birthday yesterday, yeah. by the way. Did you, <laughs> but he was do all, you know Jody? I, I know Jody well. I, yes, would, yes. I would think you do. She's um, your age. But but uh he always had to be like like the guy. Yeah, that's, that's you know what I mean? Yeah. Did you play any of that in Arlington, wherever Heights or Ar- uh, wherever the heck uh, you're I, from? Did I, you play I, I street hockey? Were you trying realize, to be like Stan McKeon? Stan McKeon! <laughs> Tony Esposito? Who are you trying to go? You didn't want to see me on skates. I couldn't skate. I couldn't skate <laughs> I meant all. street hockey, just in street I, hockey. I, I just, I didn't, I, that's something I never got involved. I yeah. Never, street hockey, yeah. I was doing basketball. What sports did you play growing up? Baseball? So, yeah, uh, baseball, basketball, and football. Okay. And then, ran, and then I ran track in, in high school. Oh, Brad, okay. did you play offense at all? In yeah, I was a fullback. So, Nebraska. Oh, Oklahoma. yeah. What did you run the 40 in? I was a I was a four five guy. You I were a four hit, five yeah, so and a forty. I was a ten. At your size? Yeah, that's why I was. Yeah, I was stupid a, commercial break getting in the way. Uh, of our fun. Hey, I, listen, I, how fast did that hour go? I want to yeah, hear about uh, your fullback stuff in the commercial okay, break. Good. On the other side, we got a I, we got a great guest. This is a great guest, and we can talk about the Eagles Giants rivalry with this guy because Bart Oates, three time Super Bowl champion, five time Pro Bowl selection center on the New York Giants. Yes, Brad yeah, Bart good. Oates. We're going to be exciting. All right, and then uh, on the other side, we'll also talk about American Underdog. We got to preview that movie. That was um, fun. We'll, we'll, we'll you, you, were, you, you were my date for that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, you were my date. He ate all my popcorn. Time. Yeah, it all his popcorn. He had his hand in my that's, bag. That's, called a, that's called a mandate. M A N date. Mandate. And it yeah. was it, it was, was a double tear, meaning. Yo, it was a tearjerker too. Oh, and I, got oh, I, I bet you were I looked over there. He's got a little sniffles. I'm Oh boy. All right, it's the locker room with Billy Schwab, Brad Quest. Right here on 97.3 ESPN and the 97.3 ESPN mobile app.
they drive too big and they drive too small. All kinds of action in front of the register service. You can do it all. Oh, for a free estimate, 609-399-1999. Call Tom Jackson and say, come by and get to know the Turkeys and Jackson often take smoked turkey cut bacon to our all-white meat chicken sandwich. Yep, we see you at Jeff Flavors for everything. Fried meat chicken cut bacon chicken sandwiches for dinner, turkey, and you never know what's going on. Offer not to be eating with the turkey cut. Smoked turkey cut bacon is a turkey sort of here in Burlington. Yep, up here too. Just call Tom Jack at 90- but today, a lot of a lot of stuff happening, Brad Quast. Yes, there is. They, is that what they thing. called you to Q? Everybody yeah, called you just yeah, Q? Yeah, it depends what circles you're in. <laughs> <laughs> 
what they call me. Again, there's different names for everybody, every circle. So let me see that number again, Brad. That we're, you uh, we're efforting uh, Bart Oates. Efforting is a good uh, media word, right, Billy? We yeah, are that's efforting a, that's our a guests. Good efforting. You know, uh, this is where you like to pull the curtain back. Uh, if you could uh, see what's happening in the studio during the commercial break, we're efforting the guest. Dumps earlier. It's uh, a. <laughs> we can to uh you do your you do your due diligence brad and i will continue here as we wait to uh contact bart oates but how about the giants he's at the eagles There's been, I guess, what, three miracle at the Meadowlands? Yeah, it's always come down to those two teams to <laughs> either win the conference outright or uh, wild card. So it's, uh, it's a great rival. Uh, I think the big thing that uh, behind it is because the fan base. Right. We're so close. It works right up the turnpike or right across the bridge. And uh, – Because going- you go – You got to I mean, go into New York. To yeah, I mean, you go anything past uh, exit eight of the turnpike, right. and it's uh, you know you're you're become a Jets or Giants fan. So it's a it's interesting. I mean, the Giants fans, and, and you know, I'm sure the uh, matter of fact, there's rumors going around that Giants fans are all selling their tickets. Right, it's going to be all Eagles up there today. Yeah, so uh, they do. I tomorrow. Think that, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how much greens up in that stadium. Yeah, so there's going to be a lot of. There'll green. be a lot of green up. There's always the, the green uh, travels well. Right. When you when you're so you're you're playing you're a player and how how much does the crowd really bother you as a player? I mean, come on, you you block that out, don't you? Like well, why is like when you say oh you, the players go into a hostile environment? That might be true, but you still just playing the guys that are across from you. Yeah, the the crowd only the, hurt, crowd the crowd hurts when you can't hear uh, the calls <laughs> offensive more so on the offensive side of the ball because you're doing audibles like when the the the, the quarterback comes up and 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 calls us out and they'll go kill 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 right. and then that means the second play that he called right and the second so that hurts when the crowd's loud but defensively it, you know we as a linebacker you're calling the, the scheme and you're calling you know the back end coverage and you might be transfer so if it gets in the way of of communication you don't hear it, it's not good but as a whole when people yell you don't they don't know if you're yelling for you or against you it just gets you going right you know so it, it's it's a non-factor so if you look at the um, – I'm looking at some of these stats that the, that, uh, the Eagles have put out. Uh, actually, uh, Pete has forwards them to me, and it's, it's – there's some things here that worth noting. Since week eight, Philadelphia ranks second in the NFL in points per drive. Uh, and they're, they're also – the Eagles have rushed for 175 yards plus in four consecutive games for the first time since 1950. So I mean, you're you're looking at some of these some of these stats that they're putting the ga- together. Uh, Philadelphia, is particularly against the Giants, the the Philadelphia Eagles have won 20 of its last on the Giants. Uh, I did something right. You did, you did Pete. Yeah. <laughs> How about this? Since Week Eight, Philadelphia leads the NFL in third down offense. They're turning the right way. I think they're the and they're also winning the turnover battle. How about this? Philadelphia has scored the fourth most most points off turnovers, thirty one in the NFL since week eight. Less, that's how so, you win games. You know, turnovers and and, and you run the ball, ball and you have no turnovers and you and, and, and you cut the game down, make it shorter by running the ball and running the clock. You win some games and play good defense. You just can't let them score. Now we're we're still trying to get uh, Pete's trying to work to get uh, Bart Oates. Uh, Bart's been a, a part of a few uh, Eagles matchups against the uh, at the at the uh, never forget. I said ah we're against the Giants. I said ah we got this game in the bag, and everybody looked at me. I <laughs> think the Eagles <laughs> lost on a last. Is that right? Yeah, lost on a. What uh, year do you think that was? Me, everything's a blur when I'm 
pedigree speaks for itself. But <laughs> the first thing that jumps out to me was that he played three seasons with the Stars. Right. So that means he knows Terry Bradway, who lives yes, uh, right here in the area and was the Jets GM. That means he knows Carl Peterson, you know, like Sean Landetta, right? If you have a, a Stars history, right? Philadelphia Stars before they were the Baltimore Stars, people forget that they finished up in Baltimore, <laughs> but that that to me like that's a that's a Cinderella story right there, uh, Brad. Somebody that started in the USFL but really was an NFLer, and his resume speaks for itself. It sure does. I mean, look at the, the, what he did: three championship Freaks, rings. Yeah, I mean, people play their whole career and don't have that. No, it's amazing. So, and any any and in five time Pro Bowler. I mean, he's one of the best best there is. I uh, you, you said something to me a while back that. Uh, I, I, I guess we were to maybe Thursday night when you and I were talking at the movie theater about how you have to hit on your on your top two picks. You have to get Pro Bowl players. And Giants haven't been able to do that over the last several years. They haven't been able to get him. The Eagles not much better, but you have to hit on your first two top two picks. Correct. The way the NFL is structured with the salary cap and uh, with the collective bargaining agreement and and free agency, you have for the your first three picks, first, second, third round. If you don't get you know starters with those three picks right in every draft you're in trouble because they have to play for you and then the first rounder they they're, they're signed to a five-year contract the rest of them are three four-year contracts and either you're going to go out and draft really well in the you know round three the to seven and then you know spend that money on a franchise quarterback a free agent but that's where all your money's tied up right. so now it cuts everything else all those years in New England. Uh, Tom Brady was a six round pick. He yeah. played, he played, went to Michigan, but didn't even start senior year. Right. It just, it's timing everything. And Isn't you don't that know that it's amazing because the guys do miss. Yeah. He went to the combine. If you look at his combine shots and it, it is, is, Crazy at the combine, you, you know the picture of the, him in his shorts. Right, I mean, right. he looked—he look, he, he just looked like a, a regular <laughs> guy off the street. I mean, he, he couldn't run, he couldn't throw the ball. Right, but, you know. But look what happened. Well, I mean, he's got it. I mean, everybody's—he he was criticized for not having the strong arm, but he's accurate and he does have. I mean, let's face it, you're an NFL quarterback, you can throw the football. Throw the football, but not like some of these guys that that came out that year or that we see now. So I mean, a strong arm throw. makes up for a few. Like if you have a strong arm, you can make up for a few deficiencies in it, your game, but overall you need to have. You, yeah. But, but a strong arm. So like they say in the NFL, you're never, they throw you open. Like right. They, right. They, uh, they, right. Like, they throw you open and you're never open. Like they throw, that's why you'll see is because the right now right. you got dallas goddard and Devontae smith that's and that's it that's it and okay. what happened to quez Watkins? He, he he i mean the guy's got some speed he dropped the ball in the end zone yeah. and, and that so and that go was, to him now? hey guess what that was yeah of course you have to you gotta you gotta keep uh, it's like a uh you know you're only as good as your last throw right and, yeah. and that was a good throw by the way you know billy that i've ripped jalen hurts for his inaccuracy Jalen Hurts put that one on the money. That should right. have been a touchdown. That's it hit, right. hit him in the damn hands. All right, but right. You look like, let's look at let's look at Jalen Hurts last week, thirteen and twenty four. I mean, they didn't yeah. have to they, throw the ball much. Now listen, but when you're running the, the when report, you're running the ball, yeah. it, it opens everything up. Because no, when you got no Jordan that, Howard, when you move that safety up in the box. Now it, it frees up your tight end. It frees up the X guy, the right. slot guy. Right. So running the ball solves a lot of problems. Really does. No, they're gonna look, they're gonna miss Jordan Howard this week. He's out, yeah. and uh, that, that's a that's a big. Uh, Davian Taylor on the defensive side of the ball. He he was playing well. Here's a guy that's undersized, right? A little bit. He comes out of uh, uh, Colorado. Didn't that's play what that you way. want Brad to talk about, which is when you're the linebacker that you know you're better than the starter, but the damn coach won't give you the chance. Like that's the thing. There, the Eagles' season changed when they cut Wilson. 
and they put Davion Taylor in and moved Singletary, Billy's favorite linebacker, yeah. uh, back, back into a more like supportive. He's got, he's, got a, he's got a great net name though, Mike Singletary. Yeah, that's true. Wow. I wish he could play I like just, Mike. I mean, but I just don't. I, I don't. I don't think he's what, good. What, you don't like him? No, no, not a little bit. Really? Okay. No, I just. I don't know. I just he gets under my skin. He just not. Look, the Eagles only spent four percent of their cap money on linebackers. What's that tell you? Yeah, it tells you that they don't need him. Un, un, unforgotten guy. Right? Just, the, I mean, he's yeah. a CFO guy. The Mike linebacker is the uh, unsung here. They don't they don't even play anymore because of the personnel schemes. They have they run so much ten personnel with there's no tight ends anymore. It's all it's all ten or eleven personnel. And, and, and like what's Miles Sanders doing? Fumble total. After the linebacker in the first round, his name was. In the first round. In the first round. First Mike Mamula. No. Great guess. Not correct. Because Mike Mamula actually played defense. Well, he was a not yeah, Not no. Trotter. Jerry, Jerry. No. Uh, drafted. Drafted Trotter. a linebacker round. in the Jerry first Robinson. round. Jerry no. Robinson. That is correct. Ah! Jerry Robinson. That is correct. Really? Jerry yeah, Robinson right. in 1979. Wow. It is the real long, guy. It yeah. is the UCLA. Longest streak in the NFL of not drafting a linebacker in the first round. Wow. wow. Unbelievable. Like that. the second That's how the much they value that position. Yeah. The second hour of the locker room is brought to you by the Great Bay Country Club, where it's not just golf, it's fun. Make Great Bay Country Club your club. Great Bay is an award-winning private golf club where you are greeted by name. It's home of the three-hour and 58-minute round. You can play with their 18-hole championship. Calendar of golf. Or give them a call at 609 609- Nine two seven five zero seven one. Great Bay Country Club in Summers Point, New Jersey. See why it's always a great day. And air. Wednesday. Come on, Billy. I played a lot of golf this year. Have you heard of uh, New Jersey's premier vacant home management service? My winter watchdog. You know those worrisome thoughts that creep into your mind. Every time you hear of a storm coming and the daunting task of driving down to the shore to check on your house, hours of time on the road, let my winter watchdog be your eyes and ears with their 15-point inspection checklist. They offer a full menu of maintenance and improvement services. Owner Debbie McGonagall and her team of property caretakers are professional, licensed, bonded, and insured, so don't let the winter worry you. They'll give your house that lived-in look. That's my winter watchdog. Go to mywinterwatchdog.com. Or give them a call at 267-202-1869. That's 267-202-1869. Or uh, send Debbie an email, Debbie at MyWinterWatchdog.com. All right, when we return. Before before you do that, I have to say that I misspoke. It's Alex Singleton, not Singletary. Yeah, okay. When we return, maybe we'll get Bart Oates. You're listening to The Locker with Billy Schwein on 97.3 ESPN.
The police. You haven't noticed that all the songs are the police. The police. <laughs> uh, we're back here in the locker That's room. That's Billy's man, thing. Was, uh, hey, I love the when I was, my brother Bob and I were all I about the, the police, police growing up, man. The Sting was the yeah, was the, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, Gordon, Billy. Gordon, Gordon Sumner. Sting is coming to uh, Atlantic City. That. Oh yeah. So if you got a guy, you know no, you. Yeah, can, I need a guy. I got Billy. A guy. If you got a guy, why don't you put up or shut up? I you, need a guy. You got Genesis a guy, tickets. Billy. Get us. Billy. Get Brad and I tickets. Genesis tickets. Brad had a guy. I got us to the uh, premiere of American oh, Underdog. Yeah. Hey, uh, I mean, so it was, now that I look back, and it, it was kind of funny because you get all these old, old football players yeah. and tough guys, and some of their wife, Ken Dunnick was there with his wife. I think Ron was, Jaworski was, was his Liz, wife, yep. right? Yep. And a couple of Kevin Riley, we ran into Kevin Riley. He was there. But you and I were there by ourselves, yeah. and there were a couple a, other it guys. A, it was a date night. But it was, but it, but it, but it was a tearjerker. It, it really and I'm, was. And we're sitting there, Pete, trying to like, <laughs> I don't want to look at Brad. He don't want to look at me. <laughs> we're just like at the popcorn between us. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it, it was a great story. I thought it was an accurate portrayal. And what was really cool is after, after the, uh, after the movie, Dick Vermeil got up. In front of it was a question and yeah, answer. Q and A. Q and A. So, so, so Billy, so Billy asked a few questions. <laughs> of course he. You know, uh, yeah, but I'm going to try to confirm if that was if he really was like that. Well, uh, I, he, you know, Dick Vermeil did. What was that? One of the questions that was asked. Yeah, I think. He, he said that he was hard on him because yeah, he but won, not but as, not as not the, the like as bad as the movie portrayed. I did uh, have one more question. My other question was going to be: How many did, did you get? I had two, but did Mike March two? And that was one too many. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, I wonder if Mike Mike March. Approve that of the, how they portrayed him. Yeah, I don't because he was. I mean, to the, according to that movie, he was tough on. Yeah, he was tough on him. The and way they get around that Brad, is ever, they say based on a true story. Based, oh, I know and that. Then but they can rip yeah, anybody yeah, they yeah, want. Yeah, but, yeah. Brad, did you ever have a coach like that that just didn't like it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right? yeah. Pete Carroll was like, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. My my rookie year up in New York. Yeah. It's a, coaches don't. They I think they they try to judge and, and coach everybody different. Right. And if they think that sarcasm and kind of getting on you is going to get the best out of you. Right. That's sure. how they, that's going to, how they're going to motivate you. Now, you know, Dick Vermeil was a hard uh, coach. He yeah. ran his guys hard, but they all love him. They love him. It's they amazing. Him. To, to, like Spag, John Spagnola, yeah. Ken Donick, Joe, jo, jo, oh, those oh, guys are, they all yeah. love him. He, loved, he was such a personal guy. And, and it's <laughs> like Billy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. first of all, anytime <laughs> I get for, to heck with you that dude. Ticket too, you any, tickets. Yeah, I'm gonna give yeah. you my number. Anytime okay. something fun like this happens, yeah. you don't call him, you call me. You call me. Uh, you told me it was earlier. Well, in the my, day. my boys bailed on me, so yeah. then I yeah, so see I'm you like, weren't okay. you weren't his plan. No, yeah, that's yeah, all right. You know. But Family I have no problem. First. Look, I have no problem being Plan Z. I yeah. just want to be in. I the was in school when he called me, so I was in my head was other places. It was funny though. So so Dick, so Coach Ramil, and where was this? It was at. Played coach, yeah. and uh, he kind of. Miranda there, and he basically told him he made the team. He made the team, yeah. That yeah. was great. That was great. So That's I'm looking tried. this up here. It's going to be released on Christmas December Day. 25th, yeah. Christmas, Christmas Day. Morning, yeah. It's going to be released on Netflix and Amazon Prime, I believe. Okay. It's, it's online. But usually they do this stuff now. The way movies have changed, they, they probably would limited release it maybe in the Philly area since they did a no, little yeah, you know what, they, did a test, right? they did a test and they, and they were pretty good about getting their questionnaire. I got an email. Right. What'd you think about? What would you improve? Yeah. Um, you know, would you, you know, was it too long? Right. I don't sections? think so. I think it was perfect. You know? Yeah. It was good because to tell the story of his background and his faith, 
you got to tell, you got to go into the preamble before. You well, know, well whole... like sports people in general know about his, his mm. story, but to see the movie really shows Did you. Did they show him in that... the grocery store? They yeah, did. absolutely. Because yeah, I, 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 I used to shop at that yeah. store. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, every morning in Iowa City. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So it's a, him being an Iowa guy and, and being overlooked. Uh, and how about the, the coach of the Barnstormers comes in? He, he, he's trying to get him to, to come to play for the arena football team. So a quick story. About, I'll tell you a quick story about Jim yeah. Foster. So yeah. Jim Foster's an Iowa guy. I was remember like it was yesterday coming in to uh, Iowa City and meeting with guys I knew that owned restaurants and bars. And he was looking for investors. He was the godfather invented this game. And oh, he, is that right? Him drawing it up on a piece of paper, watching it. Yeah. He was. They remember they were he, playing in a barn, yeah, and they I played mean, like yeah. where the rodeo was right next yeah. door. Yep, and he he invented the whole game, <laughs> and was the commissioner, and, and was the coach in the, and portrayed the coach in the movie. What I thought was pretty funny though is like remember the uh, Warner. They called him Pop Warner, by Pop, the way. Yeah, Pop, Pop Warner. Warner. Yeah, Pop. But he was sitting with his wife, and then the, the guy, the owner, comes in. And he says, uh, "Here, think about it. He pays for his. He put all that money yeah, on the table, yeah. and it didn't even phase Kurt Warner. No. Like, it didn't well, even... she, she was grabbing at it. Yeah, she was grabbing at it. Are you kidding me? D Day plays Jim Foster. <laughs> yeah, He's yeah, talking yeah, about Coach did, Foster. Yeah. It's yeah. Bruce McGill from <laughs> yeah. uh, yep. Animal House. I'm yep. looking at the cast. Yeah, yeah. The cast great is great. The guy from Chuck is Zachary Levi. That's the guy playing Kurt Warner. He, he used to be like goofy. Now he's all serious, yep. right? The girl from True Blood. That's Anna Paquin. I guess she was in the piano, but I never watched." At the beginning of that movie, uh, what, what, hairstyle. What, well, listen, have you have you? Wow, well, yeah. have you seen okay. Brenda? <laughs> have you, have you, have he said it, not me. No, I, I said it, not him. You know, you know. After the after I knew you'd do that since I had. All right, we will go. No, back. no, no. You, you said, Dominic, I'm a world class producer over here. I can play whichever one. <laughs> whichever one. But up. So I can, I like, do it up. We caught him and we got his reaction. Go ahead and play it.
what's going on? And, you know, everybody's well. It's a Christmas good, warm, Day is a good time warm, for this to come out. And, and if yeah. you got kids, you got your boys, you come. <laughs> it's uh, like the underdog. It's it's what we want to teach our children to perseverance. Work, perseverance. Yeah. work as hard as you can. And listen, you might not do it the first time, second time, third time. Keep on working, and good things will happen. And that's that's what this story is all about. I love it. Uh, on the other side, we'll we'll play Ken, Ken Dunnick and continue to talk about American Underdog. It is a truly inspirational movie, and of course, Dick Vermeil, man. I mean, he's the best. Come on. I mean, he, he's 85 looked, years old. He looks great. He looks great. He, he looks, looks phenomenal. He's just, he's just that California swag. Yeah. You know, he, just, he just gets, it. he's a, he's a good man. And uh, it's, it's great that uh, he's still in Philly. Yeah. All right. The second hour of the locker room is brought to you by the great Bay country club, where it's not just golf. It's fun. Make great Bay country club, your club. Great Bay is an award-winning private golf club where you are greeted by name. It's home of the three hour and 58 minute round. You can play on their 18 old championship golf course. Enjoy fine diner experience, lively atmosphere in the pub. The food is great too, right? <laughs> right. Remember this great. Great Bay Country Club in Summers Point, New Jersey. See why it's always a great day at Great Bay. Get down there, say hello to Radio Ron Ralston. Friends, let me tell you about Maserati, the main line. Buying experience designed to exceed all. As Maserati, the mainline offers free pickup and delivery for scheduled service appointments and provides a new Maserati loaner car. So be audacious. Call my good friend Michael Pledgey at Maserati, the mainline today at 484 804 4800. That's 484 804 4800. Or visit them online anytime at MOTML.com. All right, when we return, we'll continue with more here in the locker room. Billy Schwab, Brad Quad.
50% off one door. Get anything from this charger and its gift now up to 50% off. Plus, take home kitchen appliances for $7.99 each at the $10 mail in rebate. Explore these deals and more all week long before they're gone. Happy Black Friday! Stay stay tuned. Offer valid for a At your Eagles game day meal during Eagles season game day on game day, get an Italian hoagie on at twenty first. Or give them a call at 609-399-9983. Blitzes is home of the dill pickle hoagie. It's really a big deal, and I don't know if you ever been down there. They scoop the middle of the and we're in the in yeah. The I'll, I'll get Dave and Joan to okay, hook okay. us up, man. That'd be great. They'll send they'll send one over here. Okay, but listen, not only that, it's five. Think about this: with inflation, they they pack these hoagies. <laughs> it's five dollars. Don't be talking about inflation. Everything. We're supposed to be having fun on a Saturday. <laughs> Everything, everything's getting small. Not 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 their hoagies. So get down to Blitz's Market to get your game day meal. Now, Brad, let's get back to the movie because Chase, what's his name? Chase. Um, Chase Kelly. Chase Kelly real, plays March. Real quick here, though. I, Chance Kelly. Chance Kelly. Show, Chance not Chance Chase. Kelly. Chance. And it's Brad Singleton, not uh, Singletary. <laughs> or Alex Singleton, not Singletary. <laughs> okay. I want to read a text that came in in the first hour. Right. If people take the time to text the show, we should answer that. Sure. Joe texted in, hey, PT, I had to laugh when you said about the Giants fan going down the steps of the vet. I actually saw that happen in section 730 when I was a kid. I saw a blur go by. I guess the Giants fan shot off his mouth one too many times. I asked the usher if he was going over to where the brawl was. He said, no way, sir. I'm a lover, not a fighter. That's so right. remember at the, at the uh, vet, they used to have Judge Seamus oh, McCaffrey. Yeah. So one, one year we got beat by the uh, Tennessee uh, Titans, I think, it, like in the last second field goal, and they were the, the, the cheerleaders were slinging shirts. Right? You know how they sling shirts because yes. so the I team was, was so bad that well, they were they, giving away free uh, shirts. Like, I don't know what they were doing at the end of the game, slinging shirts. But as soon as I caught it, I turned around, and threw it, and hit the hit the uh, hit a cheerleader. Oh. Yeah. I was just. This up. This, like by the collar and everything, these big dudes. And as soon as we got to the top, there's a huge fight that broke out. And they they dropped us. We took off <laughs> and we got away with it. That. That. That's really funny. <laughs> That's That's really we, funny. We were the, that we said the, we were sat the, we were down in the lower part. I, I didn't yeah. sit at the seven on it. Listen, oh, you, you know that. Oh. Then they were, then they were 546. Them, hey, why don't we just try to start going in here? For about three years, we were able to then not have to go up, up to yeah. like get in with yeah. all the populace. We yeah. basically snuck right with, in with through all the, the royalty. Thing. Now, yeah. what was so. great about it though is, or what ended it, Billy, and this is my <laughs> point, is that that do you remember the game? It was I was in Nebraska at the time. Monday night football, Eagles 49ers. 49ers are absolutely destroying a bad Eagles team. I think it's the year that Ricky Waters was still on the 49ers, and then the next okay. year he came to the Eagles, right? So they're for destroyed. Who, for what? And was yes, thing? yeah, for who, for what? For who for what? <laughs> but they lit off M80s in uh, the stands oh. and they were throwing them. And you could hear like Al Michaels, Dan Deardorff, and Frank Gifford are like, I I think there's fireworks going on. Fire veteran stadium. It was a, a court where you get tried, arrested, right. tried, and convicted all the same day. All the same day. day. Hey, hey right. Brad, talk about the vet. You played on that turn. Yeah, like, so, you know, oh, how about oh. a second base cutout? Everybody yeah. talks about so, so Wendell, Wendell Davis. Wendell Davis. Yeah. I, I knew him. I know him. He still lives in Chicago. Both knees. What well, to say? All the same, all the same time. time. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean,
uh, the visiting locker room for the football team had a little peep show that they would watch the cheerleaders. You know, Eagles cheerleaders get dragged. You know, That's driving right. in here today. Guess what? I my friend, his wife, well, led the led the lawsuit. Led the law, yeah, so yeah, my ex, my ex was anybody. a cheerleader, and yeah, and they called it. Yeah, yeah. driving yeah. in here today. I'm sitting there reviewing topics that I want to talk to Brad. <laughs> That they did that to design to like to distract the uh, visiting team so that the Eagles was, get an yeah, advantage. But everyone knew how many guys were fighting for that hole to see. <laughs> Here, here's the story. Got- and two little windows and they were supposed to be painted out right or they were uh, supposed to be blacked out and then that is so like funny. the uh infamous Oh, no, just, no, no, just because you're you're sliding all over and nah. and you know I'm trying to uh, a guard or, or or catch up with a running back or receiver right and uh, it, they had the advantage in that type of yeah, play. yeah they had the advantage they knew where they were going so so it wasn't fun but uh this- Ken Dunnick because.
the line you know talking about a guy that just wins you know you have one of the one of those guys who just wherever they go they win it's two us usfl championships five three super bowls five championships combined unbelievable you sign them to your roster and you're gonna win super you're bowl. gonna win a super bowl. Win super bowl so let's go to the maserati the mainline sports hotline and welcome into the locker room three-time super bowl champion with the giants and the 49ers bart oates how you doing bart bart Hey, how you guys doing? All right. Hey. Sorry for the technical problems, but uh, we got you on. It's Eagles Giants weekend. It, you know that's a pretty big rivalry. The I would consider the Giants our biggest rival. Um, I tell you what, when I was uh, playing, that certainly was that was that was one that um, one of the toughest, most physical games I would play all year. Absolutely. Or what is it about the Eagles Giants that it's so? Uh, the, the rivalry is so heated. Is it because of the history with the Miracle and the Meadowlands and the Giants with their Super Bowls and just the, the fans <laughs> are close proximity? What, what is it? Is it everything? Yeah, you know, I think it's both. So I, I live here in northern Jersey, and, you know, somewhere be between here and, you know, south Jersey, there's that the great divide. And so you've got everybody on the Philadelphia side. You get New Jersey split. You got the New York guys. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just, it's one of those rivalries. It, it's always been tough and physical and a lot of animosity at times. It's gotten real gritty at times. Um, well, I, you think, know, the, I think the Eagles I, fans I, are I jealous. Eight, the Eagles I fans are jealous because the Giants are better you know, <laughs> for years. <Man. laughs> well, how about when, uh, did, know about that. did Ron Jaworski get his bell rung by, uh, LT. by LT? LT? I'll never LT. forget that hit. Woo. Oh, wait, wait, which one? <laughs> yeah, which, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Bart. Hey, you let me tell you something. Uh, there there, there, there you're back. You're back. Or talk to us a little bit about some of your fondest memories or something that sticks out in your mind about the Eagles-Giants rivalry. Oh, heck. I, well, you know, I, I was around during the Reggie White, you know, the uh, era. And, uh, you know, there was it was just a number of them. I remember one time Reggie picks me up, literally, because they, they bring him over the middle in the center and in the uh, passing situations a lot of times. He literally hit me right in the chest, picked me up, and and I was going back so fast. I tripped, I tripped Phil Sims, who fell down. I fell on Phil. Reggie fell on top of me. He got a sack without even touching. To say that, Boy, you played with some great quarterbacks, right? Joe Montana, Phil Sims. What, what, what was uh, what was it like to uh, be led by those guys? Oh, I had you know, I was just very fortunate in my career to have guys like Phil Sims, uh, Steve Young. Um, and Jeff Hosteller, Hosteller the three yeah. quarterback for Super Bowl, right? Hey, job, there was a wonderful story. A guy that sits on the bench for nine years comes in and gets a chance to play and makes the most of it.
Yeah, that, that pretty impressive. That's like right out, of, uh, right out of right out of American I mean, Underdog. Yeah. You know, well, we got an opportunity yeah. to uh, screen the nice uh, segue, uh, American Underdog, uh, Dick Vermeil's movie, the other day about Kurt Warner. That was a pretty interesting story. Yeah, that's an awesome story. You know, I mean, Kurt just taking advantage. I mean, struggle and and just never lost faith in himself. It just all all those you know this is what it's it's that that emotion and, and the in everything that sports can bring out. You know, and and that's all right there. That's what makes it great. I was just we were just talking earlier. We sitting next to Billy. He was Billy with my date. Kind of <laughs> look over, look over next to him. He's got a little tear. We're both, we're both crying during yeah, the movie. You know, I'm sure you guys. You know, kind of holding hands. Yeah, holding stuff. hands. <laughs> holding hands. <laughs> hey, Bart. This is really Pete, nice. This is Pete Thompson, the uh, producer slash co-host slash uh, man of all trades. Uh, you played center <laughs> for the Giants, right? I'm friends with a guy, right. Chris Bober, who also played center for the Giants. I'd like to get your take on what it's like playing that position for that team well it just depends on the uh the scheme uh, you know at, at center position is one that is uh you're right in the middle so logistically you've you've got to be the person that's going to kind of help with the communication at the line of scrimmage uh and so that does require some you know analysis quick oh aren't you <laughs> so you're you're a sm- It's definitely I'm, not I'm, you, sir. Yeah, I apologize. Or the offensive line, you, you can't be, you got to be, you got to be on the ball. You got to be pretty smart to play offensive line. Yeah, you got all the line calls. Yep. Well, I mean, you have to, you have to be able to, you know what you're going to do. And then. Standing still, being in one spot just makes it too easy. So they're always moving, they're making changes. They, cause the uh, offense to, to make adjustments. And that's, you know, and it's that communication where you typically will see mistakes made and uh, guys having to, to uh, you know, do things different. Oh, Bart, listen, we're up against the hard break. I wish we had some more time. Sorry for the technical problems. Uh, who do you got winning tomorrow, Eagles or Giants? <laughs> Giants, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where, are you watching, uh, where are you watching the game at tomorrow? Yeah, in my uh, in my living room. All right, buddy. All right, All right we'll see. All you. All right, Bart. Thanks so much, and we'll we'll do it again. Thanks, guys. See you soon. All right, there Take he care. is, Bart Oates from the Maserati, the Mainline Sports Hotline. Great guy. Great guy. Great guy. But he's wrong. The Eagles are going to win tomorrow. Brad, what do you say? What's your prediction? Twenty-eight, seventeen, birds. Brad says 28-17 birds. Pete and I will be back tomorrow. Yeah, I'm giving mine tomorrow. The Eagles pregame show, our Eagles pregame show. You're going to be in Baltimore tomorrow. Yeah, working correct? the game in Baltimore. Are you going to try to come into the studio if you want? Or yeah, let me little... uh, see what the schedule right. permits. You're but, yeah, invited. I'll be, I'll be, it's an 820 game, NBC game. All right. So I'll be down in Baltimore for that game. All right. We'll have our predictions. We'll have uh, Scott Grayson, Fox 29 News, and 97.3 ESPN.com. The fantasy football guru, Brian Hart. Saturday, because nothing Thank could be you. finer than talking sports with the Schweiner. We'll see you tomorrow right here on 97.3 ESPN.